Okay, um, I'll be brief. So I think a few things need to be thought about. Um, African governments are trash, but I think the idea here is nationalism. The governments of Africa aren't based on nationalism. They don't identify with any specific idea to the exclusion or detriment of other nations. Our leaders will sell us to foreign nations in a heartbeat for themselves. That's mm. that. You know, I'm not Nigerian, but in my country, I know my president has no sense of nationalism where, whatsoever. Where, where, where are you from? Where are you from? Kenya. Kenya, all, all the right. way on the other side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I know our president, other Kenyans may dispute this, has no sense of nationalism. He hmm. will sell the whole nation to anybody for a price. The Chinese are taking over right now for that reason. If he had a sense hmm. of nationalism, the Chinese would not be in Kenya doing what they're doing because the idea would be we have interest, beliefs that we are going to support at the exclusion of foreigners. That's not the case. That's not even the case of the hmm. Kenyan government. They'll sell us piece by piece to whoever has enough money. That's the hmm. main problem. Mm -hmm. The people, what are the values that the people hold? What do you believe in? What's going to be your legacy? For my country, people value money over everything else. They will sell their own family for money. They don't care. How do you build a nation with people who value money more than their own blood? How is that going to happen? Any other nation who sees that will take advantage of it. Right now, mm -hmm. the way cell phones are made, they take materials from Kenya to Canada make the materials there, ship them back to Kenya and buy it back at a huge price. So Canada makes the money, not Kenya. Mind you, Canada doesn't have the materials to make these cell phones. It's all in Kenya. But who made that deal? The Kenyan government. And mm. they get a cut. Mm. So the people, they know this. They accept it. Why? Because people would rather be miserable than uncomfortable. People are willing to suffer rather than deal with the unknown. And I used to be very upset, very upset when I would see all the nonsense that would go on. And my cousin would say to me, why are you upset? These people have the leaders they deserve. They've elected them. They've accepted it. So why are you upset? And I get mm. it. If you're willing to be miserable rather than uncomfortable, then that is what you will get. That's a legacy that you'll pass on to your children. And all you'll ever do is complain and change absolutely nothing. Power is taken. It's not given. Revolutionaries don't live to be old. They die for their cause. They set an example. They're a symbol. They understand that the government will not give up power. You have to die to obtain power and then fight to maintain it no matter what. If you're expecting somebody to fly in and save you, it's never going to happen. So long as we're expecting the West to feel sympathy for us, to come in and help us, that's insane. How many Africans are prepared to die to build mm -hmm. their nation? How many are willing to set aside tribalism, tribalism to build their nation? In my country, people will see everybody else die as long as it's not someone in their tribe. They're fine with it. But yet Thank you're still you. going to be in your Kenyan. It's exactly the same thing in Nigeria. Exactly the same thing. Thank you. Thank you for saying exactly. that. So, of course, America will take advantage of that. Why shouldn't they? Isn't that what power is about? You have to stay at the top. Everyone is always looking to knock you down. So why would somebody share power? Power is give it. You have to take power. Nobody's going to give it to you. And if they give it to you, ask yourself, why are you being given this power? Why? Hmm. Nobody's doing anything because they like you. It's all about self-interest. So if the people want change, the people have to be prepared to sacrifice, to die, and to understand the price that will be paid and to keep paying it. Change is slow and it's painful. But if all you want is money, go abroad and get money. But don't complain when you see your nation is a mess back home. So I agree with you. I mean, let's talk about the history of religion quickly in the West. The history of religion in the West was oppressive. It was about the ruling class controlling the poor so it would never rise up against them. And religion's goal was to do that. That's why the king was anointed by God. Nobody was above him. And in return, the king would say, I'll support the church. It was all about oppressing the poor and teaching them God ordained for them to stay in their position and never to want better. Then the Enlightenment mm -hmm. comes along and says, no. That's not true. Then science comes along and debunks everything religion has taught. So now questions mm. start being asked. If science is telling me that the earth is not flat but round, was the Bible right? So people start mm. breaking with religion. And of course, mm. once that starts happening, the church says we need new converts. So where did they go for those converts? Africa. They were losing yeah. people in their own land. So they went abroad. That was the whole point of the, con the conquest. New souls to save. Where were those souls going to be? 
So they come to Africa, they tell you to pray, close your eyes, they give you the Bible, they take the land. And the Africans believe that the white man's God is stronger because they won. So they fall and they believe. They even change their names to be Christian so that they can be saved as if they weren't people before that religion showed up. And it's because they believe the white man's God is more powerful. That's why they worship. They believe the white man's God is more powerful. That was the message from the Europeans. Our God is more powerful. That's why we beat you. And the Africans just accepted it. How is it that India and China never accepted Christianity and look at where they are at now? Japan slaughtered Christians, refused to allow them to come and evangelize. Japan is where now? These nations rejected Christianity and they're at the top of the game, yet Africans who accepted are at the bottom. How does that work? If God hears your prayers, why weren't India and China and Japan punished? How come Europe, who became atheist, is at the top? But nobody wants to ask these questions. That would require critical thinking. That would require being uncomfortable. People don't want to be uncomfortable. People want to be miserable rather than uncomfortable. So of course they'll keep praying. Prayer gives you hope. Hope one day it'll get better. Hope things will change so you don't have to do anything. So you can sit there and accept that your life is miserable. It's a lie. But of course you can't say that back home because people will say you're a demon, you're a devil, rather than think. Thinking is not encouraged by our governments. You know, the schools don't teach critical thinking. That's where they beat you. You're just supposed to memorize. Then when you go abroad, you encounter a different world where people think. And you're stuck because you weren't taught to think. You were just taught to memorize and spit things back out. And now you can't even compete. So now what will you do? You don't understand the world. Do our leaders even understand technology the way it's changing right now? Do they understand? They didn't even anticipate social media leading to these protests because they didn't understand how it works because they've refused to learn and they refuse to educate their people. So they're falling behind. So they themselves will become part of the permanent underclass anyway. So you only have power temporarily. You only keep your money till you die, then what? You're not taking it with you. You keep it in bank accounts that your wives can't access after you're gone because the European governments lock the money up. So now what? Your children don't get the money either. Did it work? Mm. These people have no sense of nationalism. They don't feel they owe their people anything. People talk about Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism started in the Western world with African-Americans. The revolutionaries were murdered by their own people. Let's face it, the Americans could not have murdered the revolutionaries without the complicity of their own people. How did they get access to them? Who pointed them out? Let's not pretend greed Money, this is what Africans value. Those are their legacies, even here in the States. When I look at what Africans have built in America, I say to myself, what have you left behind? You have your house, you have your car, but then what? You don't even stay for your children. No wonder home is a mess. You just took what you learned there and replicated here, even when you had the resources available. I do agree with people who say it's not just the government, it's not just the West, it's the people. What are your values? What do you want to give your children? If you have accepted this is your life, then that's all you give your children. And let's really be honest, the world has changed too much. The fact that China's in Africa right now taking over, are you telling me 200 years from now we're gonna say, oh, we didn't know, oh, the Chinese were smarter, oh, the Chinese, you mean to tell me we didn't know? We didn't know? The Chinese studied the Americans, the Chinese government will tell you. China in the 60s and 70s was one of the poorest countries in the world. They had a 20 year famine, famine. Yes, yes, they you're right, people. absolutely. They were poor until the 80s. How has China become what it is today? You know what their leaders said? Their leaders said, we will never allow ourselves to be disgraced like that again, ever. We will study America. We will see what they have done and we will do the same. And that's exactly what the Chinese government has done. They have studied America quietly and they have done the same. They said they will never allow themselves to be shamed like that ever again. So it's all about what do people want? Our leaders don't care about being shamed. They're happy to go sit in the white man's land as long as they get a piece of bread from his table and the rest of us can starve. They don't want to build their own table. It's just the truth. If the people want change, people have to be prepared to fight and die for it and pay a price. Otherwise, we'll all just keep having the same conversation. And to the ones who are in America and England saying, well, you know, I have what I need. Why should I fight? Whatever you have is temporary and it was given to you and can be taken away. It's not yours. It's not yours. Mm. You're in another man's land. Whatever he gave you, he can take it. Let's face it, in the States, if you become a citizen, they can take your citizenship away. That's not even guaranteed. So, right. <laughs> you know, they tell you when you become a citizen, we can take it away from you. Unless you were born in this nation, whatever we gave, we'll take. So, toe the line. And these are the facts. 
Anyway, I just let me ask you, you, let me ask you one, yeah. um, one quick question before you go. Yeah. That's powerful. Thank you so much for that. That's really, really powerful. And I'm sure people enjoy your contribution. So what do you think about black folks that, particularly us in the diaspora, right, that live in yeah. the West? And like I said earlier, don't know if you were listening then, that, because this, this is one of the things that drives me up the freaking wall, man. Because black folks that taste a bit of comfortability and they lose their mind, they turn out to be very mm -hmm. selfish. They detach themselves from their community. In fact, they operate in denial. They become snobs because they think now I've arrived. What do you think about those type of black folks? So here in the States, we have something we call the model minority. Those mm. people want to be the model minority. They think proximity to whiteness is the best thing that could ever happen to them, and they like it. But in order to have that proximity, they're willing to make sure nobody else gets to be close. They want to be the pet. They want to be the one that stands out. They want to be the one that walks in and says, I was the only black person there, so I must be special. They still believe white people are better than them. So being next to them must mean they're just as good, which is ridiculous. Why would you want that? Why would you want to be a model? You need to understand like playing by the rules, trying to make them like you. These people know you're not one of them. The fact that they know that they let you in means they can kick you out. They don't respect you. What, you, what do you have that belongs to you? Let's be honest, white people respect people who have their own. If you have to beg, especially in America where they believe in pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, they hate people who beg. They hate people who beg. If you're begging, they don't respect you. They only respect those who have their own resources, build their own table, and guard them. Those are the people they view as their equals. To believe these people see you as your e their equal, you're delusional and you don't understand the way things work over here. I'll give a good example. I know somebody who came to the States, you know, she came from a very well-to-do family back home. She went to very good schools. You know, they believe like, as long as you went to a good school, you're going to be fine. When she came to America, me, I knew the truth. It's not like that. So she went and she studied. She went to Harvard University and her parents paid for her to go. And so she thought she was better than everybody else because she went to Harvard. In yeah. fact, she wouldn't even speak to you because you weren't of that class. So she was at Harvard hanging out with these people. But when it came time to get a job, did she get the same job as those people at Harvard? No, she did not get that job. She became very frustrated that she wasn't getting access to the same things those people were getting. In fact, she felt she was getting less than and she was angry. Now, me, myself, I understood why she got less than. First of all, she was a foreigner. She wasn't one of them. She wasn't one of them and they knew it. She had an accent. She wasn't born here. This wasn't her country. Two, legacy. Harvard admits legacies. These are children of rich people who've been here for a long time. They only went to Harvard to get a degree. They already had jobs secured. They were just going to walk into them. You, you came here thinking as long as you worked hard, you were going to make it. You didn't understand. The rules have already been written. These people already exactly. had jobs secured. They knew where they were going to go. Their families are important people who know important people who know important people. But you, you thought as long as you worked hard, you were going to be at the same level as them. Unrealistic. So they moved on to their Fortune 500 companies and she was left behind to go home and start over broken and upset. But had she understood the rules, she would have known you were never on equal playing ground. Did you go on vacation with them? Yes. Did you go to their parties? Yes. Were you one of them? No. And they showed you by not helping you get a job at their own companies with their connections. You were never one of them. They gate kid very, very well. So mm. if you're a black person in America or England who thinks just because you're hanging around with the wealthy white people, you're one of them, please look around. If you're the only one there, they're gatekeeping. Only one is allowed in and they can kick you out. And let me tell you, you're not part of the private conversations they're having. Are you getting wealthy? Are you part of their investments? Are you investing in their companies? Are they investing in yours? Are they helping you build generational wealth like they're helping their own people of their own class? Of the same background as them? No, ah, ah. then you're not one of them.